everyone. So in this video, I'm going to talk about um, remote uh, assistance uh, in Windows 10, um, which is different than remote desktop. They're in the same category, but remote desktop, you take over the control of the other PC and the other PC get locked. Um, whereas uh, there is a user intervention in remote uh, assistance, uh, they will prompt you to uh, accept the invitation and they will also prompt you to take control of their PC so that you can help them in any problem that they're having. That is a big difference. But they're in the same category. So let's say how we do this. Um, so we want to make sure the same way as we do in remote desktop um, uh, that uh, the setting is, uh, uh, is proper. Uh, we want to make sure that um, remote test setting it says allow remote assistant connection to this computer advance make sure this is checked allow this computer to be controlled remotely and the uh, minim maximum amount of invitation can remain open so six hour is a default I'll leave it open like I leave it open for six hour and also I'll check this box create invitation that uh, can only be used from computers running Windows Vista or later. Okay, now, all right, so how do we get to remote assistant? There are different ways of getting it. If you right click on window icon, left click on run, you can time it, type it uh, MSRA and it will get you this is screen. Uh, you, you can simply go into search and time in, type it uh, MSRA and you'll get into this screen. Uh, you can also just search and say remote assistance and then you will get the information here. You click on it and you get the same screen. So now um, you can invite someone you trust to help you um, or you can help someone who has invited you. So far no one has invited me so I'm going to invite someone to trust me. So I'm going to actually go into another computer, but invite someone you trust. Uh, there are two ways of uh, doing this. Either save this invitation as a file or, or use email uh, to send an invitation. Now, this, this is a little tricky uh, because um, you have to have a email client set up on your PC to use that. I don't have any email client set up here. I use web-based email, so I'll use this. Um, there's a third way, which is grayed out here. Use Easy Connect. This is only available if you're using IPv6. Uh, I am on IPv4 connection, so that's why it's grayed out. Um, and most of you will have IPv4, so this would be grayed out for you also. So. Let's save this invitation as a file, okay? Um, we'll call it with today's date, 2, 14, 20, and I'm saving in documents, okay? And as soon as I do that, this prompt up here with a password. So when I'm gonna send that file to, uh, to the user, uh, and that user is gonna click on that file, they will get the prompt to enter the password and I'm gonna give them this password, right? So let's see how this is done. I will use uh, email, uh, create new email, and I'll send it to my other email, mail, subject, uh, file here it's in the document right here and I'll send it in okay now okay. all right so here we go um, the password uh, which was given before was uh, sorry, VMQ. 
QT to XX RR TGK. Okay. So I get the prompt on the other computer. I get the prompt uh, right here, uh, and I will just say yes. Okay. Okay. So basically, when I click yes, um, the user got that. So um, users is requesting request control, and. Okay. Okay. So basically, when uh, uh, when the user rec uh, requested a control, um, I have to respond whether to I will allow um, this control to go through. So I will just click on yes, and now the uh, the other user will have a total uh, control of my PC and I can watch him exactly what he will be doing. Okay, so after the other user allowed uh, this computer to control the other computer, um, now I can go into that PC if I can minimize. This is the PC that uh, uh, I'm working on and this is the remote PC that I'm trying to help. So I can go into that PC, I, I can help them with any problem that they're having. I can also um, close this session uh, or I can chat uh, with the other person and uh, I can also say stop sharing and I can even close this whole thing like that and this session is ended. Another thing to keep in mind that uh, when um, you are uh, connected over the internet and you have a router firewall and window firewall, how do you do your uh, remote assistance? It gets a little complicated. So let's take a look. Uh, basically what you would have to do, you would have to go into the group policy. Um, uh, if you type group policy, this edit group policy comes up. Uh, expand this. You go into administrative template. You go into system. And from here, you go to remote assistance. On the right side, you have, I already enabled these three things. Uh, allow only window vista or later connection. I enable that. Uh, configure solicited remote assistant I enable that before it was not configured and configure offer remote ass assistance I enable that so and the other thing you have to do is uh, just like with the remote desktop you would have to port forward uh, that specific uh, uh, IP address uh, uh, and uh, to that port number 3389 uh, those are the things that you have to do in order to do that. But there is a simple way, and this is a little more complicated and is a little unsecure. But there is in Windows 10, which most of the people will be using, uh, there is a thing called Quick Assist. Okay, it's a Quick Assist app that comes in. Now this app. Um, only works in Windows 10 and the other PC also have to have Windows 10. Okay, so let's open this. All right, okay. So one other thing in that is um, uh, in order to um, assist another person, uh, you would have, uh, when you click on this assist another person, um, you will be prompted to um, your Microsoft account. Uh, now, a uh, lot of people have Microsoft account, but if you don't have it, you have to create one. That's the only thing with that. So, beside from having two computer, having Windows 10, you also need to have a Microsoft account. So, I'll type in my 
Microsoft account email. Next, I need to put my password. And I have two step verification, so it will be prompt me to send the information to my email address. Okay, let's go in here. Type in my email address for confirmation. And now it will send me the code. Okay, so I'll check my email for the code. All right, just have to wait for maybe some time, uh, 30 seconds to a minute before I get the code. Now I already got it, so the code I receive is 3A. Verify. Okay. Now, see, it has already received the security code, and I have 10 minutes to respond on another side to uh, connect to this PC. Right? So, let's take a look at another PC. Okay, on the other PC, I'll also uh, search for a quick. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, once I do that, um, this is what I get. And then the code I have already from the other computer. Eight six seven eight zero. And now I'll do the share screen. So we get a getting a prompt on the other screen. Now I get a prompt on this screen and it says please choose a sharing option. Take full control or view screen. I'm gonna take a full control and I continue. Once I do that on the other computer it will say allow let uh, kill Q view your screen during the session. So I will allow it on the other computer. Once I do that, on the first computer, I will be able to control that PC. And you can notice that the other PC, um, the screen is being shared. So uh, you can maximize this right here. Uh, I can go into that PC and help that person with any problem. All right. All right. So that's how you do the quick uh, assist. Okay. Close it here. And on the other computer, it will show it will show that uh, screen sharing has ended. Okay. So quick assist uh, is not only very secure, but you don't have to worry about uh, port forwarding or anything and two PCs could be on internet and far away and you can help uh, another person. All right, thank you for watching this video and uh, please share it, like it and uh, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.